Hi everyone, I'm Jeremiah, and in this video we're going to talk about steering behaviors. A steering behavior is a type of motion behavior. That is, it dictates how an agent will move through a world. Steering behaviors have a few key features. First of all, they all use some kind of forward vector to determine the direction and speed at which an agent moves. There are also one or more possibly conflicting behaviors that act as influences on that agent, that press it in some direction. And steering behaviors are enacted through a series of small incremental changes over time that usually results in a very lifelike behavior due to the smooth change in motion. A few common steering behaviors include individual path following, which is a simple steering behavior that pushes an agent toward a path, crowd path following, which extends individual path following by adding a behavior that attempts to prevent collisions between agents, and flocking, a more complex behavior that attempts to mimic the behavior of flocks and swarms. Path following is a behavior that we use to follow a target path after it's been established. This behavior always operates on a predefined path, and it follows the general direction of that path by applying a force in the direction of that path any time an agent veers too far from it. What path following is not is a rigid process to match a path because it's always going to wander. That is what makes the behavior more lifelike. Nor is it a way to find a valid path. That is to say you must have already planned out a path in order to use this behavior. Crowd path following is a variant of path following that adds another behavior known as separation into the mix in order to try and prevent agent collisions. Here we have an implementation of the individual path following behavior, also sometimes just called path following. In this example, our agent is represented by the green dot, and the path is represented by the black line. The gray area around the black line is a buffer zone, which helps the agent determine whether or not it's going off course. The red dot is a prediction of where the agent will be sometime in the future according to its current direction and speed. And any time that prediction falls outside of the buffer zone, the agent's direction is corrected by applying an influence. You can see this influence vector in blue any time the red dot passes outside of the buffer zone. In this example, the agent's steering or forward vector is represented in magenta. Here we have an implementation of the crowd path following behavior. Crowd path following combines two simple behaviors, path following and separation, to create a new, more complex steering behavior. The separation behavior predicts when agents will collide with one another and pulls the agent away from an imminent collision. As you can see, these two behaviors do not necessarily always act in concert. In fact, they often conflict, resulting in much more nuanced behavior. Both crowd path following and flocking are examples of complex or compound steering behaviors that incorporate multiple simple behaviors into a single steering behavior. With flocking, the goal is to imitate the behavior of swarms, flocks, and schools. Even though flocking is a group behavior, the individual agents still retain their own steering or forward vectors. The various influences also make use of a strength weight so that we can tweak and adjust the behaviors over time. And we make adjustments to the individual behaviors incrementally. Over time, we scale down a vector and we apply it to the existing steering vector or forward vector. With that said, there are some computations that we do for the group and then apply to each individual, particularly those dealing with agent direction and position. There are three main forces or influences that we use in flocking in order to generate our group behaviors. Generally speaking, alignment is a behavior that drives agents to move in the same direction. Cohesion is a behavior that drives agents to be close to one another, and separation attempts to prevent collisions between agents. In flocking, the agents are often referred to as boids, which may or may not be a reference to how people from the Northeast say the word birds. In this demo, we can add multiple groups of boids, known as flocks, and assign them individual and distinct behaviors. This particular implementation also adds the avoidance behavior, which tries to avoid collisions with obstacles, but that is not necessarily a required part of the flocking behavior. If we turn off all of the individual behaviors, we'll notice that the agents kind of scatter. They move aimlessly in various directions. If we turn on just alignment, we'll see that the agents begin to move all in the same direction. And if we add cohesion into the mix, we start to see a sort of schooling behavior. If we then turn off alignment, we'll start to see more of a swarming style behavior as the agents no longer care about the direction that they're heading in. 
Turning on both cohesion and separation at the same time gives an interesting result, because while we still seem to have a swarm-like behavior, the swarm becomes more spread out as the agents attempt to avoid collisions. And by adjusting the strength weight of separation up and down, we can see this behavior fluctuate. Likewise, we can make adjustments to the other sliders, the other strength weights, alignment and cohesion, to create some interesting results. There are a few different ways that we can implement steering behaviors, but here we present one example. In this example, we have a class flock, which has a set of voids, an average forward vector, an average position, and three strength weights, one each for alignment, cohesion, and separation. We also have four methods or functions, one to calculate the alignment acceleration, one to calculate the cohesion acceleration, and one to calculate the separation acceleration. Finally, we have the update method, which is called once per tick to update the flock and all of its voids. Usually our update will be invoked with some kind of delta time, and we will calculate the average forward vector and the average position of all the voids in the flock. Then, for each of those voids, we will calculate the acceleration that results from each of the influences. That will then be scaled by the amount of time this tick represents and the max speed of the agent. Once this acceleration has been calculated, it's then added to the velocity of the void. Now, if that void has exceeded its maximum speed, we'll need to scale that back so that it's not exceeding the maximum. Finally, we'll call the void's update function so that any internals that need to be updated can be. The calculation of the alignment acceleration is fairly straightforward. We take the average direction and speed, the average forward vector, and divide it by the max speed of that void. If the magnitude of that vector is greater than 1, then we will normalize that vector in order to cap the speed, and then we will scale it by its strength and return that value. While similar, the cohesion acceleration calculation is slightly more involved. Our first step is to calculate a vector pointing toward the average position from the void's position. We'll then need to extract the distance and normalize that vector in order to get a unit vector. If the distance is less than the flock's radius, we will scale that unit vector by the distance divided by the radius. Finally, in either case, we will scale it by the strength value and return the vector. The separation calculation is the most involved. For each other void in the flock, we're going to need to determine if a collision is imminent, and if it is, we'll need to incorporate that into our movement. So to start out, we'll have a sum vector that will zero out. And then for each void in the agent other than itself, we'll calculate a vector pointing away from that other void. We'll grab the distance, and we'll calculate from the two individual agents, from the two individual voids, the safe distance between them. This is a distance outside of which we would not consider a collision imminent. If a collision is likely, that is, if the distance is less than the safe distance, then we will normalize the vector to get the directional unit vector, and then we'll scale it by the difference between the safe distance and the distance of the voids, and divide it by the safe distance. We'll then add that vector to our sum so that our agent can begin to pull away from this imminent collision. Once we've done that, we again make sure that our agent is not exceeding its max speed, and then we return the sum scaled by the strength value. Like all AI techniques, steering behaviors have their own set of benefits and drawbacks. Some of the benefits are that agents retain their individual lifelike behaviors, even though we're using group calculations. The group calculations are simple and cheap, and we can very easily change the influence a behavior has over an agent. When we make adjustments to those weights, we can fairly quickly see those results realized. That is, those behaviors are very quickly manifest in the world. However, there are some drawbacks to steering behaviors. They don't work well in indoor environments or when we have lots of obstacles. They also don't work particularly well in many cases with single agents, although there are some exceptions to this. Because they don't have a lot of memory, they're also prone to oscillation or flipping. And like many behaviors, they can require a great deal of tweaking. With that said, steering behaviors are commonly used in the industry, with path following and flocking being the most often implemented.